uh, make sure, because I really, honestly, my name is Matt Trowbridge. I'm, I'm here from the University of Virginia to tell you about a, an experiment we're doing um, that is really student-led. It was student-generated, and we're just really trying to take up this uh, mantle that they've, this challenge they've given to us. And in the MedEx uh, kind of a, uh, model, we're just trying to throw out what we're doing. And uh, we really are hoping to get your input on it. Um, and I'm, I purposely have made it a presentation that doesn't give enough information about what we're doing because I really want to make sure we have time. I really do, the whole point is to try to get you guys, uh, I know there's expertise in this room that we need. So basically, uh, I, I'm talking about uh, an initiative that really is student generated and they've come to call it Reboot Healthcare. Uh, and, um, and my co-instructor, uh, you know, David Chen, right back there from uh, UVA's uh, biomedical engineering uh, department and our, also our co-faculty member, Eric Hewlett. Um, we're having a lot of fun working with these students. And um, basically the whole premise is we believe that there uh, are elements of, of, uh, of, of uh, problem solving and problem approaches like design thinking that really deserve to be considered as, as new competencies uh, for future physicians. And let me explain why we think in that way. We strongly believe, and I think it's just true, I don't feel like I have to say I believe, it's a truth. The grand challenges of healthcare are fundamentally changing right now. And basically, you know, so this is a, a me. <laughs> on my, on my Emory, Emory Medical School graduation day back in 2001. And I, you know, what I wanted to kind of, the reason I was saying, I brought up this picture um, is uh, that I was thinking about it, you know, when I went into medical school, uh, from the moment I entered into medical school, what was happening was you would, there was a parade of master clinicians that would stand up in front of me and would, uh, and would show me their craft. And the implicit message really was, if you follow our, our system, you will be the same excellent clinician I am. That was, that was the aspiration. So it was about continuing this master clinician role. The tricky part is, of course, our, the grand challenges are changing, right? Now when you hear students come in, if you ask them what they're excited about in their career in medicine, what they tell you is, I plan to lead change in healthcare. Wow, okay, they're on it, but I also know the secret that I think you guys know too, that the way we have medical education hasn't necessarily caught up. And what are we talking about? What are these grand challenges that, I, that are changing? You know, there's lots of them. The ones that, that I'm really thinking about a lot these days are things like the implicit uh, changes in data. I had a conversation recently that really floored me. I realized that the entire way we structure being a doctor um, is based around an a assumption, which is that the only health data that we create occurs during a patient examination, right? That the only, that it, literally, if you think about it, everything is set up as that's of health data. My goodness, already in 2016, that is so not true. And as we all know, particularly in this room, it is exponentially accelerating. Disruptive discovery. Things like genomics and microbiome, like they really, they, they scare me. I, I know it's true, <laughs> but I have no idea what that's going to mean, right? It's going to be a part of being a doctor, providing clinical care, but we have no idea what that's going to be. Like, we haven't even thought about how to define what that means as what the physician role is in that environment. And then systems issues. The biggest epidemics of our time are things like childhood obesity. These are not things that we will develop a vaccine for, right? These are things where the problem lies in a complex system, right? Wow, okay. Those are the grand challenges. That, those are the types of things that, are, that we have to try to figure out how to address um, together. So the problem is, as I said, medical education really hasn't kept pace with the, these, these, uh, these challenges and the changes have, have come across so fast, uh, we just really haven't thought about it. And our argument is that human-centered design offers a really interesting, maybe even we're arguing for the sake of being a bit provocative, maybe a necessary competency for future physicians. And what do we mean by that? Well. If you think about those grand challenges, like the way things are shifting, what are the core things that you really want a student to be able to do, right? If it's uncertain what they're going out into for their career, 
um, they're going to need to be creative, right? And they're going to need to have that as a core part of who they are. They need to at least have, and I don't like artistically creative. I mean, they need to have structured processes for making sure they're thinking creatively about challenging issues. Similarly, they need to have real processes for leadership. I mean, if, if you work in academic medicine or stuff like that, it's, it's this funny thing that uh, who gets to, which is a very complex managerial job, you get that job by being a basic science researcher. <laughs> and it's kind of really good at leadership, right? OK, that's been OK. I, but some of these challenges that are coming and the, the enormity of change in healthcare, we're going to need to do better than that. Like we're going to need to really start thinking about to what extent, to, how, do, how do we prepare students so that they can actually lead change and be ready for change, you know, uh, not be scared by change. Um, and then empowerment. I think we just need to make sure that we're sending a message through our education <clears throat> that when they are in these positions of power to be able to try to make changes, that they, they feel that it's okay to, that they have a sense that systems are expecting uh, physicians and obviously the full care team, but I'm talking, yeah, that student, that, they, that they're empowered by the system to, to try to lead that change. This is our design challenge that we've given ourselves. You know, how I, might we integrate human-centered design into medical education? And this really is, at this point, where I start showing highly experimental work. And I really do try to get quickly to ask you guys for help. Because that's not a, that's not a small thing, right? Everything, you might even think everything I just said was true. But matching that up into uh, medical education, which carries a Fairly strong burden, right? We only have four years to teach people how to be a doctor. I mean, my dad always reminds me, it was, my dad has always talked about, like, it was four years when I went to med school in 1968. I can't believe, and that was in 2000, you know? Um, you know, immunology was, um, was, we think there were these things called antibodies in 1960s, you know? Uh, and when I went to medical school, it was the, it was the, it was the heart of the AIDS epidemic. So it was HIV, it was the very beginnings of understanding of, of of um, retroviruses. Now, I, I mean, it's, I can't believe it's still four years. And we're pr proposing to add something more. That's dangerous business and really hard. So you can't really see us very well in this contrast here, but myself, David in the back, and Eric, we're excited, though. So we're, we're trying this out. We figured we, um, and what happened was we came, you know, we had this idea of, like, Maybe design thinking offers something really interesting. How could we do that? Let's, OK, it'll be hard, but let's try. Let's do an experiment. And when we went to Medicine X, we really we had this an amazing, it was so exciting to be in this group and hear people trying out really uh, experimental things. And I think the implicit message of Medicine X is go out and do it and see what happens. <laughs> so we did that. <laughs> so in September 2015, we, we attended the MedX Ed event last year. And really came back inspired by, um, by folks. And so then in October 2015, we launched a UVA human-centered design program. The key thing that UVA did for us, which was really remarkable, is they didn't give us any money, really. They gave us some. But what they really did was give us uh, access to the incoming students. Like, we, they allowed us to send out an email to the incoming class and say, would, some, would, would students be interested in participating in a human-centered design program, highly experimental, in addition to your normal coursework. Wow, that's quite an ask. I think they thought, sure, Matt, we'll send that email. No problem, few electrons. Well, you know what? There's 110 incoming students in UVA. 50 kids showed up for the information session. And as soon as that happened, I was like, OK. You pat yourself on the back. We're so innovative. Yeah, we're way behind the students. OK, this is. What we kept learning in the intake statements was, hey, I was a super sophisticated healthcare consultant before going to med school. I think in design thinking, it's been so scary to me to think about to learn all this information, not in that way. Wow, OK. You know, we also had students literally say, I've been looking for this type of uh, program in med schools, and I can't find it. And it's so exciting that UVA is offering something. Amazing. So this, these, these guys, these are the brave ones. They said, sure, we'll do this. So what did we do? Well, we had 10 incoming med school students uh, in UVA. And in the fall semester, our first try at a curriculum or a basic structure for the program was we focused really on the skills of design thinking in the fall. We did a number of exercises. 
what, when you user-centered design, we basically were like, what time does a med student have? How much? So uh, we basically get to meet with them about once a month for about three to four hours. We do these intense workshops. We use Slack as kind of like we set up teams and we're still learning how to do kind of asynchronous you know, learning, but also community building and so forth. Um, and then uh, here we basically, uh, the students just started clamoring for real, they wanted to apply stuff. We're like, okay. So we actually, let's not make it up. We went to quality uh, improvement group and said, can you open up the door to your, your room? And they were like, sure. And there they were, the top six True North issues of UVA. And we just said to the students, choose two. <laughs> and they did. Um, and basically, the, the really amazing part of UVA was people stood, uh, they, they did step up and like, like the head of hospitalist program and all these things volunteered their time to get these students' experiences um, with patients, which was really amazing. So, again, I don't know, uh, sorry, these, the projector's not so great. But basically, we, they, the two things that they took on were um, patient falls, uh, which was amazing. And the, uh, when basically, we did these you know, classic design thinking exercise. This is actually one that Susanna Fox taught me, which is basically, you, if you see, he's got a, a high heel shoe on one side and then a purposefully unstable heel on the other side. And then basically, they, they rediscovered all the things that any occupational therapist will tell you. Most falls, they discovered first time in their, in their minds uh, that most falls occur going to the restroom in the middle of the night. And that it's all about, you know, and so we, but we did these empathy exercises of learning how to have gait, you know, what it's like to have gait instability, not be able to see very well, have to manage IV poles. And it was, they, they loved it. And, it, and it, it generated amazing conversations and actually really interesting insights, which I'll, I don't have time for in this conversation, but they, the, the students really did uncover things that actually really made a difference to the way the occupational therapists were thinking about this issue. Uh, we took on the issue of, um, of readmissions, high utilizers, um, and uh, UVA basically found the 50 high utilizers, that highest utilizers in their system, and we basically had our students uh, go in and do, whenever they were an inpatient, we had, we put in a little med student team to interview them about, not about their inpatient experience, but the transition to home. And it, man, uh, again, these, these, these patients are extremely well known by UVA, and uh, when you heard, but the thing is, the stories that the med students came back with um, were just amazing. Like one of them, like the students came back with, and they don't have, they don't know how incredible the information they're getting is. They were saying stuff like they came back with one story, like, well, so amazing, so inspirational. There's this woman, and she has very low visual acuity, and and but she still manages to take all of her meds by like shaking all the bottles, and she can tell which ones are which. And they were like, isn't that amazing? And you saw the whole care team who knows this woman well go like. They didn't know that about this patient. They thought they knew so much about, right? It was an amazing experience. And as we kind of got there, we got into some really interesting design issues around what should discharge instructions be and how do we manage at-home care for types of patients. Um, and the really cool part for them was, you know, the last slide was the head of quality improvement for UVA. And we had him, he was, he was brought into our uh, show and this, uh, into our, uh, into our uh, workshop, and the students were able to present their patient data to him and he was, he, was, he, he was incredible, and they just came away so inspired that they were actually affecting uh, the way UVA ad addresses these things. And you can't really see these pictures, but basically the, the same woman you see in that picture, Emily, um, the really amazing thing that happened that I didn't even know until, uh, and I see some of my colleagues that are teaching these types of students, you know, what was so cool is like, they went off for the summer, you know, and they went and often did well-established programs like the one we have. We have a, we, UVA has a, a relationship with a hospital in Guatemala. And basically what happened was I didn't have anything to do with this. Emily brought design thinking processes down to Guatemala and just started doing it, okay? And she started addressing what are the barriers to cervical cancer screening in these rural villages in Guatemala. And the reason I found out about this, not from Emily, but from my colleague who runs this program, who called me up and was like, Matt, what are, you, what, are you, what are you teaching these students? I just got this call. Uh, this, my field staff down in Guatemala uh, want something called design thinking, uh, things translated into Spanish. Like, what is that, Matt? What are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. But, he, but then, they, then he quickly said, your, your two students who participate in that program are far the best students we've ever had. And the programs that they came up with uh, were actually, the field staff 
the, the, it, you know, the native staff is actually excited to keep going with it. Okay, you know, I don't know exactly, that, that's, an, but pretty impressive. And I know Emily is gonna be, she was gonna be impressive anyway, but I think what I was really impressed with, she really took on this idea that it was, we were giving her a real tool. So anyway, we're, we, the cool part is it was successful enough that we actually got a little more funding from the Alumni Association and we've at, actually started a second cohort now. Um, and they just entered. And this year we're gonna be taking on the issue of improving patient experience uh, in the ER. Classic design thinking issue, we're excited to, to take it on. And I think the only thing that uh, I really wanted to kind of leave you with was what we're struggling with a little bit is where do we go from here? Like, um, if you were to take this and make it a real competency, the traditional way would be very structured learning objectives, mapping lectures, content driven, and so forth. I, I got one of those, I put it in front of the students, and they were like, oh man, no, please don't do that to us. We really don't want that. What they want is this. They had, what, what we had last year was awesome. It was an authentic experience. It was more framework based. It was all about empathy and learning how to talk to patients and, and so forth. Um, so I don't know, I, this, I, I'm not, I don't solve this. That's where we're, that's what we're kind of trying to figure out uh, as we go forward. And so the point of this is the next few years, I don't know exactly what's gonna be happening, but I, I'll be trying to come back and talk to you guys about this. But um, we put together uh, you know, what we're doing online at, uh, at UVA reboot.healthcare. Um, I would just love it if you check it out and please share whatever thoughts you have from your own experiences about that. We're, we're doing our best and we're having an amazing time. <laughs> and the students are incredible. So I'm optimistic for the future. So. <laughs>